section of the class um, on social media metrics that I think is most important that I wanted to share with you again, just to make sure that you got it and uh, see if you wanted to go over this section again. In it, we, t we had talked about the quantitative versus qualitative analytics, and this is within the realm of quantitative analytics, where we want to take a look at how we can track our success on social media. And because visits and likes only tell us so much, and we, we can get a little far with reach, we can see how many followers we have, how many likes we have, and growth, how we do month over month. But these are broad metrics with low business value. My example there was our former president. He may have had a lot of people following him on Twitter, but only some of them were true supporters. A lot of people might have been just following to see what happens, right? Engagement is more important with our social media platforms, and we want to know if we're connecting. So how would we do that? In that vein of politics, I did take a look at a couple uh, candidates. Uh, a few years ago, I, I kind of did this kind of paper where I was not really a paper, but more of a study where I took to look, look at uh, something called the conversation rate. This was pioneered by a local Santa Barbara and Jim Stern who wrote a book about it. Um, and he takes a look at the number of audience comments divided by the number of posts and you get a number. Because this is what we want, we want a number. So here we're looking at Senator Klobuchar's announcement speech from the 10th of February in 2019. There were 9,936 comments on six posts that day, and it gave her an average of 1656 in terms of comments per post. This normalizes the average, kind of normalizes everything throughout the day, and you could do that for every day of the month. A word to the wise, this is for like bigger accounts with lots of followers and lots of posts. Small businesses that post only once a week and have hundreds of followers, their posts may still be important, but it may not be as impactful with this kind of data. So I took a look at Amy, and then I took a look at Senator Cory Booker as well. And he clearly, you know, here I counted up 7,343 comments to six posts on the 1st of February different day, and that's gonna affect things a little bit, but we're looking at the announcement at least, right? And w the other things I can look at besides that conversation rate is maybe the amplification rate. This is two others that were given by Jim Stern, who I call the godfather of analytics in the United States, because he kind of started the whole web analytics uh, craze um, or industry. The amplification rate is the number of times content is shared divided by the number of posts. And that's just a number that we can get, another average where we can see how we do compared to others in our competition. The applause rate is the number of time content is liked divided by the number of posts. So this gives us a little more information than just simple likes and follows. Yes, some of that is in there, the shares, right? But how we do over time, it's gonna be a lot more important than a single viral post that we're looking for. Right. So when I put that in a table, it looks something like this, where I can put columns for the product or business or candidate in this case, the conversation rate, amp rate and applause rate and see how well my campaign or my product or my business does versus others. And clearly I could have done this for Mayor Pete and Senator Sanders and a couple other candidates, but this is just a, a touch on what I might do if I was a social media person for this campaign, just to kind of get a little better idea of how we're doing compared to others and whether we're seeking traction out there. So um, that's just a quick note on that. I think this was pretty important because we need to look at a way to make it more scientific and more quantitative uh, than it might necessarily be. Thanks so much.